My name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a local realtor with Keller Williams in South Central Alaska, and my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today, what we're gonna be talking about is how you can actually lose money in this market, even as a seller. You know, even in this market that we're finding ourselves in in early 2022, in which just everything is just moving very quickly, and you see all these, these ridiculously high, you know, sold prices, where everyone's like, "Really? I sold for that? Really?" Well, this is how you actually lose money, even as a seller in this market. But before we get started and we go into more on that in detail, make sure that you do give this video a like and you do subscribe to the channel so you can receive more information like this in the future. Now, without further ado, let's go and jump into this, uh, this topic, which I'm sure does not get a whole lot of press these days. Now, the first thing that's gonna make you lose money, and I'm sure they're, they're I'm gonna lose some of you right off the bat here, but the first thing that's gonna make you lose money is basic human greed. Now, that sounds, that sounds really cynical, but let me explain. If we go on at a high price point and we know we're just trying it out for a little bit, we're only gonna do that for like maybe a week tops, maybe in a market that is this hot. Now, we're gonna give it a little bit and if we're not just getting overrun and a lot of people making offers, that is a very, very clear, loud um, vindication or sign from the market that we are not priced to where we need to be. In this market, if something is priced to where it needs to be, it has got three or four offers on it within the first day easy, and most of them are gonna be overpriced, or most of them are going to be above price, I should say. If we've been on for like a couple of weeks and just nothing, then we need to make an adjustment quickly because realistically, everybody knows how quickly things move in this market. And if we've been on for a couple of weeks, that's about the equivalent of being on for like a month or even a couple months from a couple of years ago. So if we're overpriced, we need to make that adjustment quickly. And if we don't, then it's gonna end up losing you money because where we might have been able to get 400,000 before, you know, by waiting, like an extra three, four weeks to come down on the price. Well, now you're going to be getting closer to about 390 because people are going to see that comes in and it comes down and they're like, yeah, they've been on for a while. Let me let me see if we can get them to come down. Let me see if I can start asking for closing expenses. And yeah, you're you're in a bad spot at that point. And I'm sure that, you know, the plan is, oh, well, we're just not going to accept any of that. It's like, well, OK, that's that's fine. But um, essentially, you're asking for a good Samaritan to, um, to come around and give you a fair shake. And that's, uh, I wouldn't expect that. Uh, a lot of these buyers have been getting roughed up pretty bad by sellers lately. And if they see an opportunity to take it out on somebody, they definitely will. So don't, don't put yourself in that spot. <laughs> The second way that you can actually lose money in this market or at least leave money on the table is not by doing any staging at all. Now, I've said in a, a couple of videos before that I, I really don't see staging as being this, this end all be all for selling homes. I know that's the way it's presented on HGTV and there's a basic baseline of staging we need to do, like keep it clean, keep all the surfaces cleared off and make sure it is light and bright, new light bulbs, Basic stuff like that. We're not talking about you know bringing in an entirely different set of furniture and completely re redesigning the place necessarily. Maybe it needs that. It's going to be situation by situation. But not doing any staging where your stuff is just strewn all over the place and it looks like some kind of a, a college dorm or something like that. And it's just messy and everything like that. Then yeah, you're going to be leaving money on the table that you could have gotten just by putting a better foot forward. Um, even in strong seller's market, you still need to put your best foot forward as a seller if you're trying to get as much as you possibly can for it. Yeah, those folks uh, those folks gave you a great deal. They gave you asking price. Somebody might have been willing to give you above asking price had you done the basic staging. So make sure we get the basic staging done. The third biggest thing that I've seen sellers kind of mess up on in this market and actually end up losing money and wasting time is pushing the buyers too far. Okay, and what I mean by that is just really asking for a lot of unrealistic stuff like something that is called an appraisal gap. We have one brokerage here in town that really seems to just love this all get out it makes sense because they're not actually realtors. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna jump into that too much, but 
Um, yes, you're gonna find something called appraisal gap where you say, okay, well, if it doesn't appraise for this, will you at least give us, you know, 5,000 just in your cash money, like over asking price. You start pushing buyers too far like that. And that's, that's just one example, but you start pushing them too far and they're gonna have buyer's remorse immediately after agreeing to it. And they're going to look for an opportunity to get out of it, or they're gonna look for an opportunity to get even. And you're gonna, one, have a situation that's just very antagonistic and very adversarial, and it's not what you want in a real estate transaction, or they're just gonna walk the second they get an opportunity. And you think they won't do that in this kind of a market? then you probably haven't worked with, with people before and you don't really know human nature. Once you've kind of offended that pride and put them in a position where they're not feeling good about their decision, they will look for a reason to walk away and it'll be 100% emotional, not based on the numbers that are in the transaction, but they will look for it. And that's not gonna be setting you up for success because that's gonna be about a month or so of your time that's just gonna be wasted for, for really just pushing too far. So that's, that's something we need to avoid as much as we possibly can. Don't push too far, know where the line is with each individual person because everyone's gonna have a different line. So know what that line is and don't push beyond that. Let's take a break real quick. For those of you who've been watching for a while, you know that I have weekly updates for what's going on in all the market centers here in the South Central Alaska area. If you are even considering getting your property on the market, I highly recommend you take advantage of those updates just to educate yourself on what's going on in this market. And also, if you are considering getting your property on the market and you're just trying to figure out what the, the home selling process looks like, do feel free to reach out to me for a copy of my free seller's guide. And the way to get a hold of me for that is to go onto my website, register, and in the comment section say seller guide so I'll know what to send you. And that's gonna have a really good detailed breakdown of what you can expect anywhere throughout the process. There's obviously no obligations to it. So you can, even if you decide to work with somebody else, then enjoy, use the information and um, catch you later on down the line. Now, without further ado, let's go and finish up today's video. This next one is so painful when I see it happens because it's 100% avoidable for the most part. And that is people not making their properties available for showings. If you are just really constricting the number of people that can get in there and see it, you are really doing yourself a disservice. And the reason that I say that is because, yeah, you might've gotten like one offer that came in. You probably could have had at two or three or four or five of them had you made the property really available for people. And I'm not saying you just open up your house all the time, but I am saying make your property available as much as you possibly can. I understand people have families, they have pets. Some folks I was working with, they had some had some uh, children, they had some um, some medical issues and they, so they couldn't show it as often as we would have liked, but make it as available as you can. And that's, that's gonna really serve you well and give you as many options as possible. The last thing you can do as a seller in this market to really, really do yourself a disservice and leave a lot of money on the table is by taking and posting these awful iPhone photos when you have the opportunity and the encouragement, very, very strong encouragement recommendation for me to go and get professional photos. People who just take iPhone photos and think they're being really slick and saving a little bit of money on the on not getting a professional photographer out there you're really you're like you're trading nickels for dollars at that point and the reason for that is you're going to look really bad when you put it out there because everybody else has got professional photos on there and your property is going to stand out as the one turd that's got the iphone pictures on there and all the buyers are looking at that even in this market and they're going oh that seller's obviously not very motivated okay i'm, I'm good i'll pass on that one and it's a very bad impression that you're making versus professional photos, which by the way, usually only like, like 180, 250, somewhere in there, and makes a huge difference. And it's gonna make the marketing for the rest of the property be a lot smoother and get you a lot better results. Yeah, like I said, it's painful when I see it because I, I can definitely understand the thought process, but fact of the matter is professional photographer knows what angles are gonna work good and they've got the equipment to make it look 
great. And beyond that, they've got the editing to make it look great. So even if you have you know, a camera, I've got a camera. I'm looking at a camera right now. I'm still not gonna go try to take pictures of my own property because I don't have the editing, I don't have the wide lens, and I'm just not gonna be able to do it as well as they can. So no, just, just pay the money, have somebody else do it and put your best foot forward. And don't take the chance of looking like the complete turd compared to all the gems that are out there. So I sure hope this was useful for you. Um, if it has, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, objections, concerns, um, angry tirades or anything like that, feel free to post those in the comment section down below. They all help the algorithm. I don't care one way or the other. And if you have any questions for me, me, feel free to reach out to me either on my website, on Facebook or Instagram, and I'd be happy to help as best I can.